have Nigerians finally found the Inspector General of Police they can be proud of in Muhammad Abubakar Adamu, the 20th Indigenous Police Chief. Muhammad Abubakar Adamu assumed office on the 15th of January 2019. He was greeted with internal security challenges which include kidnapping, armed robbery, banditry, cyber crimes, among others. Before he became the police boss, the trust, confidence and relationship between citizens and the police were narrowed because deaf ears were given to public outcry in civil matters. Here are instances that suggest that IGP Adamu is a listening police chief. Barely a week into the year 2020, and a viral video shared on the 5th of January showed how policemen were assaulting a man identified as Justice Obasi over an alleged refusal to unlock his mobile phone. The video, which sparked massive outrage on social media, got a swift response from the Nigerian police force that those involved would be identified and investigated. When the attention of the IGP was drawn to that video, he promptly ordered a comprehensive investigation into the case. In less than six hours, the, the police officers were traced, arrested, and their true identity unveiled. As I speak to you, they are currently facing an orderly room procedure, which is our own internal disciplinary process. Jombo Oga, an officer of the Nigerian Security and Civil Defense Corps, was allegedly beaten and killed by two traffic agents for disobeying traffic rules on the 20th of March 2019 at Nyanya, a suburb of the Federal Capital Territory, Abuja. The wife to the disease who was present during the incident recounted that her husband was dragged to the ground and the policemen delayed in taking him to the hospital when it was obvious he was unconscious before he later died. So as we were going, he stopped my husband, he told my husband to stop. My husband said, for what? I am late. Please allow me to drop my children. I'm going to the office. He said, even if you are late, let me cause the hold up. Nami caused the hold up. He went towards my husband's car. Started dragging my husband that my husband should come down. Gave my husband a slap. Before you know it, the other uh, fellow uh, traffic warden came with uh, him. He was holding uh, this talk through. The other person was holding talk through. They were using it on my husband. The police boss thereafter ordered a probe into the death of the late NSCDC officer and called for calm from family and friends of the deceased. He also noted that the case will not be swept under the carpet. They were all pushing my husband on his forehead like this. Tell him, civil defense, we taught you people this job. For the DPO to come and say, eh, hey, let's bring you to and test it. This man is pretending, you know, let, get me syringe, get me syringe, let me deal with him. Get me syringe. So I was watching them. My husband was lying down life, lifelessly. That was how they killed my husband. They killed my husband. So I came down no more. Normally, the way I come down, it was like 6.30 to 7. It was pretty early. Right. I was still in my nightwear. I was wearing a gown, my nightwear. And I had the knock. Who is that? Ah, Pastor Piotr. Immediately, I just opened the door. He didn't utter any word. He just pushed me to one of the chairs in my living room. And... I saw him like he was removing his belt. So I was like, what? He just said, keep quiet, do what I want you to do, and you'll be fine. Bosola, wife of popular singer Timi Dakolo, alleged during an interview in June 2019 that clergyman Biotu Ibo raped her when she was a teenager. Bosola had expressed displeasure over what she termed as delay in bringing the accused to book. Fatoimbo was finally questioned two months after. 
the first public relations officer, DCP Frank Umba, said the reason it took longer to interview Pastor Fato Imbo was that the investigative team had to get the insight of other parties involved before inviting the pastor. However, during the investigation, police officers stormed Akulu's home in Lagos. Policemen were said to have allegedly tried to force the couple to come to Abuja against their will. On hearing this, the IDP ordered an investigation of the police officer over alleged threats to life, mischief, among other accusations. Listen, one thing you need to know, in the matter of two or three witnesses, the truth is established. I say, what you have now, I'm going to do. What is my you that I see you? I say, I'm going to do it. 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 Senator Elisha Abu was seen in a viral video verbally and physically assaulting a woman at a sex toy shop in Abuja. The video was greeted with rage, public outcry and protest at the first headquarters, National Assembly, on social media and in the mainstream. The Inspector General of Police ordered the arrest of Senator Abu and his orderly for the assaults. The IGP then directed the police commissioner of FCT to closely monitor the forensic analysis and investigate the matter, especially the actions and inaction of the police officer who happened to be his orderly. Abu's apology for his misconduct did not stop the police from charging him to court. The lawmaker was arraigned at the Zuba Magistrate Court. He pleaded not guilty to the one count charge read to him and was granted bail to the tune of 5 million naira. His trial is ongoing in court. Everybody wants justice in this world. It was traded out there to point me to look like an animal that I assaulted a nursing mother. A lot of revelations will come out in the interest of justice. In God alone, I trust. <laughs> The arrest of suspected high-profile kidnapper Hamisubala Wadume apparently led to the gruesome incident on August 6, shown in a video that went viral that horrified the nation. These men were seen lifeless with others battling for survival. Soldiers of 151 Tax Force Battalion were accused of shooting at the officers even after an introduction had been made. The police in a statement alleged that its operatives were killed by the army and kidnapped Kingpin released. In time past, as cross section of Nigerians believe matters like these would be laid to rest, giving the supposed impression that the army is superior to the police. But the ensuing war of words between the army and the police continued. The obvious displeasure of the IGP over the incident sprang up allegations and counter allegations against the army. He showed that he was behind his men, as many would have thought, in quote, let's let sleeping dogs lie, end of quote. The two national security agencies, the Nigerian police and the Nigerian army, were at loggerheads. <laughs> The joint operation of the Nigerian police and the Abuja Environmental Protection Board in a bid to raid suspected prostitutes in the capital city of Abuja. About 70 women labeled prostitutes were arrested, just as the police were accused of rape and sexual harassment, prompting an all-black dress protest by non-governmental organizations, human rights activists, and concerned Nigerians. To be a woman is not a crime! To be a woman is not a crime! The police chief reacted to the accusation of sexual abuse against his men by condemning the act. He said in quotes, Women were arrested and charged and they were convicted, which means that they committed an offense within the FCT. But that police officers were alleged to have raped and molested the women, we have set up a panel to investigate anybody caught or proved to have done that who faced the law. Weeks rolled into months after the IGP gave his words that the matter has been addressed. The crime rate in 2018 for kidnapping, armed robbery, banditry brought palpable fears in the hearts and minds of citizens, particularly in the southwest region. The crime graph showed 37% of armed robbery crimes occurring at the homes of the victims. We've been able to arrest a total of 6,431 high-profile suspects. Most of these suspects are kidnappers, armed robbery suspects, cultists, cattle rustlers, and the rest of them. Within this period under review, 
we also recovered a total of 2037 arms weapons of assorted mix and description over 21,000 rounds of live ammunition of different caliber were recovered a total of 945 kidnapped victims were rescued on hot and successfully and safely reunited with their families the IGP happens to be less controversial compared to the previous police bosses where they seem to be at loggerheads with politicians. For instance, the tenure of former IGP was rated by analysts as one of the most controversial moments in Nigeria police history. I mean, transmission, I mean, uh, efforts at the transmission conclusion to transmission me, I mean, transmission. For example, the tenure of Idris witnessed some perceived persecution of former Senate President Bukola Saraki. I plead again, not guilty. And former Kogi West Senator Dino Melaye, who were seen as strong critics and opposition of President Muhammad Buhari and his government. Since the completion of his tenure, the Nigerian police seem to have relaxed his persecution of former lawmakers. The ITP has also made effort to correct faulty narratives about the Nigerian police force. He mandated police spokespersons across the country to work hard to correct some uninformed perceptions of the force, as its image is important for effectiveness in fighting crimes. The IGP's men seem to have taken advantage of modern technology and have ensured timely response to issues to a considerable extent. They either give tips on how citizens can protect themselves from violent crimes. I can say this authoritatively that you've got in IJP Adamu, a very listening, responsive, and responsible leader. The IGP also warns his men against misuse of firearms and illegal roadblocks. He noted that policing is not an application of brute force, saying officers will not go unpunished for professional infractions. Hopes appear to be alive as Roots TV spoke exclusively to IGP Adamo, and these were his vision for the year 2020. We essentially in 2020 want to fully implement community policing strategy, which means taking the police back to the community, the initiative of um, identifying crime, looking for solution to solve the crime, in partnership with the police who come from the community. So in 2020, we'll, it will go full-blown in terms of the implementation. And in terms of logistics, we want to improve on what we have. Now that the IGP says the relationship with people at the grassroots as a way of redeeming the image of his men and the entire Nigeria police force, it is believed people now have confidence in the services they render to the nation, protection of lives and property. Perhaps this will give people a sense of belonging that there is a listening IGP in Muhammad Adamu. Oluwatobi Kinton reporting for Roots TV, Nigeria.